Well, here it is at this stage. Finally done all the uh, legal requirements. Got my brake and lamp inspection done. And uh, got the VIN verified to get to the uh, CHP and had them check it out. It's not stolen, all that good stuff. So yeah, it's got the lights mounted on here. And these are, uh, you know, basically where everything's gonna be. But I had to put the lights on, make them work. The lights and of course the brakes. So I got a, a rear brake is actually on the front here on the hands. So that way I'm with my feet, I don't have to do anything. Uh, there's no brakes down there, obviously no shifting because it's an electric motorcycle. Um, and of course the front brakes on this side. And the motor is mocked up in there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So pretty exciting. So now um, this bike came with some dirt bike tires and I got some street bike tires. They're used, but they're pretty good shape off of Craigslist. So here they are. And I got to get these guys on the motorcycle. And I've never changed out a motorcycle tire before. So I uh, bought some equipment to do that. I got my super long tire irons over here from Harbor Freight. And voila, I've got my bead breaker, my Pittsburgh bead breaker from Harbor Freight. So this is one of the hard things to do on uh, motorcycle tires, changing them out, or any tire really, is breaking the bead. So I'm gonna put this thing together and take one of those wheels off the electric motorcycle and see if we can break the bead. Assembly. Insert the column six into base one, fix the column six into place. Oh, I think I'm just gonna go look at this to put this together. Construction could not be simpler. Three bolts here, put these pieces here. Cotter pin, cotter pin, bada boom, bada bing, bada done. So let's grab a tire, throw it up here, see if we can break a bead. Okay, here we go. Got the motorcycle tire on here. It's on the bead breaker. This is the first first ever push with this thing. See if I can get this bead broken. All right, I'm gonna stand, I'm gonna put my foot in the back side here. And I got a little lever action going on and see how it goes. Okay, it looks like it's still kind of holding. I guess you gotta get really close to the rim to get the bead off. Let's see, oh, by the way, I also already took out the valve stem. Obviously you don't wanna try pushing on a Tire that's inflated. Okay, so we got this bar right next to the rim now. Let's see if this is gonna get off the butt. Oh, okay, it wants to kick up a little bit, so I'm gonna have to put a foot over here too. Let's see. Well, now it's kind of sliding on me. All right, let's see. I might have to make some adjustments here, but uh, otherwise, it definitely has got a lot of force to push this rim and squeeze it down. All right, this thing worked pretty good. Um, the tire wanted to slip out a little bit as I was kind of you know, pushing on it with this, the bead breaker part. And I did also stick the back end underneath my washing machine here, cause that wants to kind of kick up as you're putting weight down on there too. But otherwise we're good. So pretty much the second rotation, I got the bead to pop off and that was the same for both sides. So yeah, definitely worth uh, worth it so far. Now I've got to take the tire irons and start prying on my tire and see if I can get this thing off the rim. This is where it starts to get a little challenging. I've got, uh, I started, I started this with two tire irons this big, pulled up this lip here, so there's one here, and then I had another one over on this side. So now I pulled it out, stuck this other temporary one in, I'm going to try to stick this one back in right about here to grab some more tire bead and pull it around. I'm using these little chunks of plastic, it's actually Kydex, it's pretty uh, heavy duty plastic, as what they might call rim savers. So you stick them under here and you stick your tire iron under there and as you pull around it doesn't scratch or uh, damage your rim so uh, I got this much up I gotta pull another bit more around it's starting to get a little bit challenging though so I got this side of the tire off got the bead all the way over the outside of the rim so this one's off and it definitely helped to uh, once I had those three big or the the two main tire irons in there and then I sort of had a placeholder tire iron here, took this one out and stuck it back in and definitely helped to have a little bit of uh, soapy water. I, I just used kind of like a light, simple green mix. It was slick enough. Mainly it helped me get this end of the tire iron in and poke in really deep so that I could grab the lip of the tire. So just a little bit of uh, slippery help there. So now we're gonna flip it over and see if we can get the, uh, the other side off. What really helps is to get the, uh, the rim basically sort of cockeyed in the tire here. So I'm making sure that this side of the tire now sort of sits right up in this hump of the rim you know so as it if it goes in farther it actually lets the whole tire shift this way on the rim and that gives you more slack on this side 
when you want to peel the tire up around or actually we're gonna be peeling we're gonna be peeling pushing the rim through this way but still you want to get the uh, you want to get the side of the tire up into that little area right there Whew. okay well I got the tire on here and I had to use these two spoons and the bead breaker and at one point I even had this and I had to take the sprocket off too to get it on so yeah there's I mean it would have been it would have been really tough without this I was using this bead breaker to hold the bead of the tire down in uh, so that the, the bead was kind of up in this part of the rim which allows the whole tire to scoot this way and gives you more more slack when you're you know getting the uh, the bead all the way around and tucked in here and so that was basically the only way that I was to get around so it definitely takes a bit of doing it's not super easy I suppose if you do this day in day out you'd sort of kind of get the hang of it so you know in all I'm still definitely happy with the purchase it's a at least for this time it paid for itself and you know if I don't want to do it again that's fine I've uh, you know, I've, I've learned how to do it. Uh, of course, if I ever want to, if I ever have to do it myself, I can do that. So this is the back tire. I'm going to put it back on the motorcycle. And then uh, we're going to tackle the front tire next. And I think it's going to be a little easier because it's a bigger diameter. And it might be uh, just a little more of a pliable tire being, um, being that size. So we'll see how it goes. Well done. Got the front tire mounted after I uh, finished the rear one up. And I have to say that was a lot easier than doing the rear one. Um, I was able to just do it with those shorter tire spoons that I had. Uh, I did pop the tube on my first install, so I had to grab a second tube and put it in. But anyway, there it is. It's finally got some street tires on it. And uh, so I think the next thing I'll be doing on this is to be working on mounting the um, motor in the precise location. Uh, it's actually got to go down back the swing arm there and then I'll also be um, <clears throat> mounting the framework for holding the batteries and other electronics so <clears throat> next up will be a little bit of cutting grinding and welding on aluminum which will be fun <laughs> 